But today, in today's day and age, there's a lot more people that are capable of winning a race. I mean, it's like, well, I'm a speedway. It's good competition. And it's a, there's a lot of people that can go out there and win that race. Um, and a lot of it is people have better equipment. Um, shocks are a big piece. The ability to call your chassis manufacturer and get a good baseline set up. And a lot of it, like you were talking before, there is no handbook for wedge noses. We were kind of the wedge nose setup book for a lot of people. But now all of our cars are very similar nationally. Right. So you can call up Master Built, Longhorn, Rocket, Club 29, whoever, and say, hey, I'm on a hard tire. Here's kind of the basic configuration of the track. And they can get you pretty close to the baseline. And then from there, in my opinion, it's up to the racer to take it from that point. There's no magic. It's how hard you work at it. That's, that's it, true. Exactly. There's no witchcraft in setup. It's, it's all about getting in the seat and feeling what, you know, feeling what the car is doing through your butt. Reading. Learning these cars. And, and, and that's a process that can take years. And we've seen it. Oh, I mean, yeah. It, you don't it, just get on it a... It takes a long time. It does. It really does. Um, I mean, and there's just tons of things that, I mean, these cars are, I mean, they're very complicated cars. I mean, to be honest with you, I, in my opinion, they're more complicated. Than, they're one of the most complicated race cars on the out there racing. There's no doubt um, about that. There's so, because there's so many changes you can make to this car. When you compare a dirt late model to a cup car, a dirt late model is... You know, it, it's calculus where a cup car is is basic addition. I mean, yeah, it's it's aero. I mean, that, most cup cars right now are all just running around on bump stops. Yeah. So it's body position and aero, and you know, granted, there's a lot going on in those cars. There's a ton of engineering that goes into it to get them what they need to do. Don't get me wrong, but they can't. You know, they don't. They're not four bar cars. They're you know, they're not, they can't move a bar or lengthen a bar or change shock drop or change, you know, all these different things that go into it. You know, they're doing it with other means, you know, with body positioning on the car and how the air hits it. And, you know, how, there's just a lot of things going into that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it uh, cost of racing has gone up, but I don't think it's as bad as it's being made out to be in my opinion that's only my opinion right right um there are pieces and and a lot of it like we talked about earlier from i mean i think a lot of it is everybody um reach you know from a from a local track level and we were talking about car count earlier i I fortunately had the luxury last year i was in a autograph session deal at a race that we were racing at i happened to be sitting next to two drivers that that owned racetracks and we got talking about local tracks and car count and fan base and, and stuff like that. People are, it's not just Oregon, um, all across the country from a local track scenario, car count and fan base are dropping. They did say that they're specialty events, whether it be a Lucas Oil World of Outlaw, whether it be Sprint Car, a big USMTS, UMP modified, whatever the the venue was if it was a special event their car count was good and their fan base was good they're struggling to get local racers back to the track and fans back to the track and their comment was you know i think a lot of it has to do with there's there's so much for people to do these days well and social media um people live streaming you know races so people don't have to go to races anymore mm-hmm. um and just different things like that that are keeping the local racer piece down. Um, but, you know, we're, I think we're all struggling, and we'd love to have it like it was back in 2001, one, two, when there are 50, 60 cars at Willamette Speedway. Absolutely. Um, no, 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 no. I don't know that you would ever get back to that. It would be nice if it could, but um, I think just <clears throat> things are changing, and, and we need more racers. We do need more racers, and and we've got to figure out a way to how how what's the answer? What is the answer to? And I know that we, we say you know in reality, and John's got some valid points. Racing really hasn't cost, it hasn't you know the cost really hasn't risen that much when you really break it down to like he said with the shocks and everything. But how do you get more guys into 
into the track to, to increase the car count? What, what's the answer to keep the cost from going so high the average guy has to park his stuff? How do you, how do you prevent that? No, and I don't. I mean, I, I wish I knew the answer to that, but I think a lot of it. Um, the, the unfortunate thing is we're all racers, like we were talking earlier today. I hate to lose. I mean, second to me, I, just, that, I hate it because we're all racers. We want to win, and it take, that's most racers, that's what they are. And But I think a lot of it, too, is that um, – I know when I first started, I started in a street stock, and then I bought a used car from Bruce Hipple, and then I bought a new car. And it, unfortunately, there's a timeline there that it takes to get to the point, because even if you have the means and the way to buy a car, it doesn't mean you're going to go out and win a race. Right. You got to learn how to drive these darn things. That, that's right. You spend all the money you want. I don't care street stock or a modified or, or whatever the case may be. You have to learn how to drive them. That's right. Um, and that, and that takes time. And it's, you know, it's like Justin, you know, he's young, but he's been in a car since he was four years old and he's 20. So, you know, he's been behind the wheel for a long time. So experience is a big piece of it. Plus, you know, I think a lot of people just have to, uh, race within their means and, 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 and do, I don't know. I mean, it's. I think we need to get a younger generation into it. Well, and I think um, something you just and, said was racing within your means is probably the biggest thing because we've seen so many guys want to race a late model so bad or want to race a modified so bad and they can't afford to and they go out and they spend all the money to buy the car. Now they got the car and they can't afford to race. So they have to sell the car, they have to park it, and they put themselves out of the game totally. I mean, racing within your oh, means I, is, yeah. is a huge, huge deal. And we've seen so many racers do exactly what we just talked about. You got to be smart in how you do oh, stuff. Oh, I agree totally. You have to be smart in how you do it. Like I said, I bought a street stock, raced it for a year. Thought that was the coolest thing in the world. I bought Bruce's car, um, raced it for a year. Bought a brand new car. Spent every dime I had to buy this brand new car because I wasn't terribly old, even though I am kind of old. But um, <laughs> bought this bought this car and um, blew a motor up. But car sat for a year because I didn't have the money to do it. I could have probably got the money, but it was what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and then, you know, a lot of it's learning how to just do everything on your own, how to fix your own cars, how to build your own bodies, how to work in your own shops. And, and it, that, that drops the price of racing down a ton. Um, and, uh, but you know, I, I don't know. It, it's like I said, it's, it, I would really like to see our in our area nothing and ninety percent of it too. I mean, I'll be honest with you, it, it the racing is a piece that's selfish for a driver, but I have more fun going to the races and hanging out with the people. You know, I mean, we you meet a ton of amazing people at racetracks, um, and like I, what we've been doing lately going out nationally i mean there's just some amazing people we're very fortunate right now with our stuff parked in the midwest we're not rent a place we're just fortunate enough to meet some really nice people that are allowing us to keep our stuff at their house and inconvenience them and we have a couple different places across the country it's an amazing sport where it, 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 it's odd you can go you can go race your buddy or not even your buddy somebody you don't know wreck that same guy will typically offer you a shop to come fix your car so you can race against each other the next day. Right. Now, uh, uh, amazing. in our conversation also, you know, we living on the West Coast and going back there and doing some of the national shows, I asked you the same question uh, I'm sure a multitude of people have already asked you. Why did you leave your stuff back in the Midwest? And I thought your answer was, again, very smart on how they're doing it, racing back there. You mentioned what it costs to drive from Portland to Iowa. And back, uh, I mean, you're going to spend that much racing half your season here at Willamette Speedway just on one trip. It was four thousand dollars one well, way. Well, yeah, I mean, it was it it costs us to go from Portland to Nebraska around two thousand bucks one way. So to go from Portland to Nebraska and Nebraska to back to race a race is four thousand bucks. 
That's a lot so of money just for us, traveling. Right. So that's an expense that didn't make business sense to me. No, when you can get on a plane like, and fly well, a round if, trip for 300 <laughs> Exactly. And as long as I have a place to keep my stuff, you know, why not? Plus the fact, too, is so we were back there for two weeks, or I was back there for a week, and Justin was back there for two weeks. Well, Justin, in less than 14 days, raced nine races. So it's like, holy cow, I was only there for a week and raced four races, five races. We only had four so, races all season here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Exactly. And so that, for, for for me, you know, I can spend that $300 round trip ticket and get two months of racing in in a week. Mm-hmm. And then come home and stand a business and, and do what I need to do. But, um, and not everybody can do that. I understand that totally. And, and we've spent the last two years preparing ourselves for this piece of it and getting all the pieces in play and all the different people and talking to people and um, to get to where we're at. It wasn't just a kind of a drop of a hat and here we go. But, um, you know, it's something we've wanted to do. And I've always been that type of person where I like to travel and go see, just go do other stuff. Um, And so it's kind of the direction that we needed to do. And it kind of works out. Plus from a financial standpoint, I'll be honest with you, the, in the nine races Justin's got and the five races I've got financially, it was not having to drive from Portland to there and there to back from a racing economics. We made money. I don't know how many people you know, can say so that. That, <laughs> that piece of it. No, exactly. We were able to, to make money on it by the end of the day. Cause we know we calculate what it costs us per lap to run that car. And so, you know, if we're in a 30 lap race, I know what that race cost me on, on fuel, tires, you know, motor refreshing, um, da, 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 and we have that calculated out. And so we have to make a certain amount of money to pay for that day. Even though, you know, well, I only burned 25 gallons of fuel and bought one tire, that's not all your expenses. You, right. you got to calculate for pressure the motor up and other things. And, you know, so, but, it's uh, it's all part of it, and I I agree with you guys. Our races are probably the biggest because we're biggest problem because we're gonna go try to get the next widget yeah. to beat the next guy. A lot of racers think that's what it takes to win. You got to have that next big thing in racing, that next part that, and which it necessarily isn't true. I mean, there are we've seen some products that have changed racing definitely that that can put a guy in victory lane, but it's not just about the parts on the car, which John mentioned earlier. If you don't know what you're doing, you're never going to win a race. Exactly. No, it's, it's going to be very hard. I mean, it's an experience thing. It, it's a it's a time thing, and that alone can be expensive. <laughs> We've seen some guys getting cars and, and racing outside their means and take it out, stick it in the wall, and, you know, I mean, every little the time. racing crew over with. Right. <laughs> right. And we've seen it. You know. Yeah, and, and that's the difference, too, is most of what we do is, you know, locally is a hobby, you know, mm-hmm. and so at the end of the day, it's to go have a good time and go race, and hopefully you win some money and win a race or two and, and do your thing, and then that is, you know, that's what we did for many, many years, and then kind of ventured out in the reach in the national thing and see where we're at, and, you know, we get our hand, rear end hands to us, and it makes us want to work harder at what we do and learn more stuff about shocks and learn more stuff about, you know, load numbers and chassis dynamics and body positioning and and different things, because that's what the guys, but also a lot of it too. And this is kind of an interesting deal is the first race we went to at show me 100. It was a Thursday night race and um, Earl Pearson won that race and Scott Bloomquist finished second. Bloomquist had a better car, but Pearson outdrove him on the track. So a lot of it is experience. And, you know, Bloomquist or the Pearson took away his line because he knew Bloomquist was better in turns three and four than Pearson was. And he knew that. And he took 
Bloomquist line away from him and ended up winning the race. And so we were talking about that. It's not all about how the car's set up. A lot of it's 